Hey guys, I'm Redeemed Zoomer, and today I'm showing you guys this map of churches that I have made to help you guys find a church to attend. I do a lot of online Christianity things, like I have a Christian Discord server, the link is in the description, and I have a Minecraft server where we build churches in Minecraft, but I'm very clear that is not a substitute for going to church in real life. If you want to follow Jesus, you need to go to church in real life, you need to fellowship with other Christians in real life, you need to receive the sacraments in real life. So this map is my personal church recommendations. I know that if you have different beliefs than me, if you're from a different denomination, your church map might look different than mine, but this is a biased map because it is my personal recommendation, but I, I still think it would be helpful to all of you. So this is a map of historic Protestant churches. This is not the same map as the Operation Reconquista map, which is over here. This map is just a map of all conservative mainline Protestant churches, whether or not they have like historic buildings or whatever. But this map is different. This map that I'm talking about in this video is my own personal map. And the qualifications for these churches are that they are historic Protestant churches. There are several requirements for a church to be on this map. The first one is that they belong to a classical Protestant denomination, meaning a denomination that actually is from the Protestant Reformation. A lot of churches that are classified as Protestant these days are not actually from the Protestant Reformation. Like Baptists, Pentecostals, and non-denominationals get classified as Protestant, but they're not actually from the Protestant Reformation. The churches that are from the Protestant Reformation are Reformed, Lutheran, and Anglican, and that's what the churches on this map are. They are classified classical Protestant churches that come from the magisterial Protestant Reformation. The next requirement is that they be non-liberal. A lot of Protestant churches these days are liberals due to the fact that they've been hijacked by people who don't agree with Protestant beliefs. But all of these churches are non-liberal. So that means they're either in some sort of evangelical offshoot denomination like eco, uh, like this is an eco church. It's, it's split from the mainline PC USA or RPCNA. There's, there's a lot of, um, there are a few really nice looking RPCNA churches. There's this one. Uh, there's uh, yeah more RPCNA churches. There's EPC churches, uh, PCA Presbyterian churches. I know I know I have some here. So conservative offshoots are included on this map because this is not the Reconquista map. But there are also PCUSA churches on this map as long as it's clear that these PCUSA churches are not liberal. For example, First Presbyterian Church of Hollywood is PCUSA, but it's still on this map because it is part of the fellowship community, which is a conservative network within the PCUSA, clarifies that it's evangelical and it, um, it resists the liberalism of the, the PCUSA. Uh, as for Lutheran churches, I would say most of them are LCMS churches. We have lots of LCMS churches. In Wisconsin, we have a lot of uh, Wisconsin Synod Wells Lutheran churches. Um, for some reason, in the Milwaukee area, there's just tons of Lutheran churches, so we have that there. Milwaukee is kind of like the Lutheran paradise on this map. Uh, Grand, the Grand Rapids area is like the Dutch Reformed paradise on this map. There are just so many Dutch Reformed churches in Grand Rapids. There's like three pockets of Dutch Reformed settlement in the U.S. Like there's one in uh, northwestern Iowa, and there's a lot of Dutch Reformed churches where I'm from in the New York City area and North Jersey and stuff. Pennsylvania and the Carolinas, that though that's where the Presbyterian utopia is here. Pennsylvania is like a magical place because on the one hand, you'll have beautiful PC USA churches that are conservative, but on the other hand, you'll have like... OPC churches that have really nice buildings. So Pennsylvania really is the Presbyterian utopia. You can find all of that on this map. I, I knew I had a... I knew that there was like a, a nice looking OPC church somewhere here. Uh, I think this is what it is. Yeah, so this is an OPC church, but you can see it still has nice stained glass. So the Pennsylvania area really is a Presbyterian utopia. South Carolina's got a lot of Anglican churches because there was an entire Anglican diocese that split from the Episcopal Church and joined the ACNA, and they got to keep all their historic buildings. Um, but the Diocese of Dallas has a lot of conservative Episcopal churches, like Church of the Incarnation is a really, really solid biblical um, Episcopal church. Now, you'll notice that all of the churches on this map have somewhat historic-looking beautiful buildings. That's the third requirement. Um, the church needs to have either a historic building or a modern building that's in a traditional style. So, for example, in Nashville, Tennessee, Covenant Presbyterian Church in Nashville, this is a PCA church. The building was actually built very recently, but it's in a traditional style, so it still counts. It's a very beautiful church, one of my favorite churches in the country. It's a PCA church, which means it's very conservative. 
And Covenant Presbyterian Nashville, it's an amazing church. I know the pastor by two degrees of separation, and they've been through a lot if you guys have been following the news. Really awesome church. So yeah, lots of great churches all over America. I've made sure that all the top 50 largest cities in America have at least one Reformed, one Lutheran, and one Anglican church. That's even the place in places like San Francisco where it can be hard to find good churches because of how progressive it is. And a lot of the churches are liberal mainline churches, but no liberal churches on this map. Um, so yeah, that's the third requirement. They need to have pretty buildings. Now, why does this matter? Well, in Protestantism, because the mainstream Protestant institutions have largely been hijacked by liberalism, Protestants have largely been alienated from our own institutions. That's why there's the stereotype that Protestants don't have beauty, because a lot of modern Protestant churches are ugly or built recently in some ugly modern style. But that stereotype isn't universally true. It's only true in the modern world due to the fact that we Protestants have sort of been alienated from our own institutions. This map is to try and break the stereotype that Protestants don't have beautiful buildings because we, up until 1960, every local Protestant church looked just as beautiful as the local Catholic church. Up until like 1960 in America, in every town, even like the most rural, obscure towns in like the middle of nowhere would have beautiful Protestant churches like this, right? Obscure churches in the middle of nowhere, not just rich urban areas. Um, so the fourth requirement is that the churches have traditional worship. So if the church has like a traditional worship service and a contemporary service, that's, that's fine. Like I know a uh, Highland Park Presbyterian church, one of the, it's an eco church in the Dallas area. Like they, uh, th they have a beautiful traditional service. They also have like a contemporary service. That's fine. But if the church only does contemporary worship, it only does non-liturgical worship, it probably is not going to go on this map. So if you are, um, here, here's an, here's examples of churches that would be excluded from this map. A beautiful Baptist church that does like traditional worship would not go on this map because it's Baptist. That does not come from the Magisterial Reformation. If you have like a, a PCA church that does traditional worship and it's very conservative and preaches the Bible, uh, but it's, it's like a church plant that meets in a strip mall, not going on the map. Uh, another thing is, like, let's say you have, like, a Catholic church with a beautiful building, also not going on the map, it's Catholic. So the four requirements are it needs to be in a classical Protestant denomination, needs to not be liberal, it needs to have a beautiful building, and it needs to have tr a traditional worship style. Now, this is not a map of all the churches that are, like, good. I'm sure you could still, I'm sh sure there still are great churches that don't have beautiful buildings. But the specific purpose of this map is to preserve Protestant tradition because, uh, traditional Protestant churches that are traditional in both their beliefs and their aesthetics are very rare these days. So we need to preserve that. There's a lot of congregational churches in New England. There's this really cool congregational church, Park Street Church. It's in a conservative congregationalist denomination. And it's in Boston. It was founded specifically to be a, a congregational church that still taught Trinitarian orthodoxy because in like the 1700s, 1800s, a lot of the congregational churches were adopting the Unitarian heresy. So let's leave America for now. Brazil has tons of Presbyterian churches, and here's why. The mainline Presbyterian denomination in Brazil, uh, the IPB, did not go liberal the way the mainline Presbyterian denomination in America, the PCUSA, my denomination, went. So because of that, Brazil has tons of beautiful historic Presbyterian churches. This commemorates the first Lord's Supper ever done in Brazil. There's actually a really deep Calvinist history in Brazil. Uh, there was a confession of faith, the Guanabara Confession. It's a reformed confession of faith written in Brazil, and the people who wrote it were martyred soon after writing it. There's some good churches in Africa, like in this part of Malawi, there is a really beautiful Presbyterian church, this part of Malawi in Africa. Let's see, there's, uh, of course, some Dutch Reformed churches in South Africa. Tanzania has a lot of Lutheran churches. There's Tanzania and Ethiopia are becoming, like, the biggest Lutheran countries in the world, just about. So there's a lot of that over there. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? So, in, in Europe, in Britain... There are a lot of Church of England churches that are still very conservative that don't give in to the liberalism of some of the higher-ups in the Church of England. So there's a lot of good Church of England churches in England. So I, I'm not completely giving up on the Church of England. 
Uh, the Presbyterian Church of Ireland, which is mostly centered in Northern Ireland, is still pretty conservative. It's another example of a conservative mainline denomination. This is why I want to retake the mainline denominations, because it works wonders when you have a mainline denomination that is still faithful. Evangelical offshoots can just never really recapture it. So yeah, all over Ireland, uh, we're struggling getting some pictures here, it seems. But yeah, all over Northern Ireland, beautiful Presbyterian churches. Northern Ireland is one of the best places to be if you're a traditional Presbyterian. The Church of Scotland has indeed gone pretty liberal, so the mainline church in Scotland is not doing very well. But luckily, there's some pretty strong conservative offshoots in Scotland, like the Free Church of Scotland and the Free Presbyterian Church of Scotland, like... Uh, Scotland has a lot of historic free churches as well. So if you're in Scotland, as long as you're not in like rural areas, if you're in one of the Scottish cities, you should have no problem finding a good church because the free church is luckily a pretty good denomination. Then we get to the Netherlands, which obviously has a lot of great Dutch reformed churches. Um, the PKN is like the mainline denomination in the Netherlands, and it's got some liberalism, but luckily there's still a lot of churches in the Netherlands in the PKN that are not liberal. So uh, we need to strengthen these, and there's some also some conservative offshoots in the Netherlands as well. I think Abraham Kuyper started his own denomination, which is kind of unnecessary. But yeah, the Netherlands has a lot of churches that look like this because it's Calvinist. You'll see there's a lot of non-figurative stained glass, which is my favorite type of stained glass. Yeah, the Netherlands has a lot of really cool churches, um, and it's, it's the Netherlands. You'll find beautiful churches that look like this absolutely everywhere. Uh, okay, so Germany is a bit of a tough area because the um, the EKD, the mainline uh, Lutheran slash Reformed Church in Germany, has gone pretty liberal. So um, the SELK is like the sort of the German Lutheran PCA, and it doesn't have that many historic churches in it. So Germany is a bit of a tricky area. Um, in Milan, Italy, there's this really cool uh, Reformed slash Lutheran church here. So even if you're in Italy, which is a mainly Roman Catholic country, you can still find Protestant churches. Hungary is a great place for Reformed churches because the Reformed church in Hungary has not been infected with the liberalism of the... Um, of like a lot of the other denominations. So you'll find beautiful Calvinist reformed churches all over Hungary like this, especially in Eastern Hungary. Eastern Hungary is the most, like Calvinists are actually a majority in Eastern Hungary. So there's the reformed great church over here in Eastern Hungary. There's a beautiful Calvinist church. What else? The Slovakian mainline Lutheran denomination is still solid, so you'll find really cool um, Slovakian Lutheran churches even in like the Slovakian countryside. Uh, also, Latvia had a Lutheran church that was going liberal, it started to ordain women, but then it stopped doing that. So the Latvian Lutheran church is my favorite Lutheran denomination. Uh, what else is there? In other parts of the world, you know, South Korea is a very Presbyterian country. So, I mean, a lot of the churches look modern here, but there's still some magnificent Presbyterian churches in South Korea. And liberalism, theological liberalism, is basically non-existent in South Korea. Um, South Korea is one of the most hardcore Christian places. It's like the majority of the population isn't exactly Christian yet, but the Christians that do exist are very hardcore in South Korea. There's a lot of really cool Anglican churches in India, um, when they don't get burned down because there are some, you know, um, ethnic, ethno-religious violence in India. But yeah, a lot of cool things in India. And you get the, you get the idea. You can explore this map. The link is going to be in the description. Uh, but this map is meant to show that although Protestantism is not going through a good time right now, although the majority of Protestant churches are either, you know, beautiful but liberal or conservative but, you know, ugly and ahistoric, there are exceptions and there are thousands of exceptions. Another thing you can do with this map is you can, like, only look at certain denominations. Let's say you only want to look at Dutch Reformed denominations. You can only select the Dutch Reformed ones. You can see that the South is not very Dutch Reformed. Or let's say you only want to look for Lutheran churches, you can do this and you can see that Lutheran churches are most heavily centered in the Midwest, or you can find that Presbyterian churches are very centered in Appalachia or whatever. But yeah, it's a good map. Um, I know it's going to have some problems because I can't do a thorough investigation in each of these churches. So if you see a church here on this map that you think shouldn't be on the map, if you know something about that church that I don't, Please tell me and I'll just investigate it and remove it. Or if there is a church, if you know of a church that meets all four of these requirements, but it's for some reason not on the map yet, you can tell me about it and I'll most likely add it to the map. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I hope this map is beneficial to some of you and I will see you guys later.